everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. I'm Paul Wintorek, right. and here we are in the heart of Times Square. Yes. Though you can't tell, but we're here. <laughs> uh, and oh my God, we have uh, Mark Evans is here today, yes. you guys. Um, From Mary is, Poppins. Who's fantastic. Um, he's, you know, big uh, West End star, but now he's one of ours. Now he's in New York, <laughs> and he's at Mary Poppins. He's at Mary Poppins at Paper Mill Playhouse. Yes, very exciting. Opened. So uh, claimed. And he's very tall. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll get to him, but let's talk about the news. What's yeah. up, Brian? So, first of all, obviously the big news was Alanis Morissette's Jagged oh, Little Pill. Oh, I know. So where is this? Yes. So, so the music, you know what's funny? Over the weekend, I was just telling friends, I was like, oh my God, there's going to be a musical. I was like, it'll probably never happen. And then <laughs> yeah, I, I no, came to work today, and it's like, no, it's really happening. We've been hearing about it for happening. a long time, and so the ART. And uh, I was listening to the album. That's why I brought great, it up. I just like randomly put album. it on, and then... I made it happen. Right, so it's happening at ART in Cambridge, um, cool. directed by Diane Paulus, um, Tony winner Diane Paulus, yes. and then uh, Juno. Who directed one of your favorite shows. One of my very favorite shows, Waitress, yes. which I love so much. Yes. Um, also, uh, the Juno screenwriter, Diablo Cody, she won, a, she won an Oscar yes. for that movie. She's writing the book. Um, and, and she's so, appropriately edgy. Yes, she is appropriately edgy for this. And that, um, it's a, almost exactly a year from now. It'll be in May 2018 that that will premiere at ART. You know what else is happening a year from now? Adina Menzel's doing an off-Broadway play. That's right. And it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Adina Menzel. Happy birthday, Adina Well, Adina just Menzel. thinking of things that we know about really far in right. advance. And there are some actually other really cool things happening So I guess ART. Adina Menzel can't be in the Jagged Little Pill musical. She, she unless she well, unless she's play. making it part of her Why birthday celebration. Why are you laughing at me? That could have worked. <laughs> you're right, you're right. She's that like, could have worked. I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> she's um, out. Anyway. But ahead. the other thing that's really cool is, so Andy Mientis, who we all know yes. and love, he has written a musical called Burn All Night, and that's also going up at ART. Which is really wow. exciting. Yeah. Is that so. the musical? I feel like that might be the musical he premiered a song. I think we did a song at 54 Below. Mm, yes. I think you're right. And yes. it was yeah. really it was super good. And that's awesome. Yeah, so he's written the the book and lyrics for that. Um so that's going up. And a few a uh, few other shows, uh, that Warhol Capote. When you remember oh. you heard about this, the meeting of those two, the imagined meeting of these two. I think they really met. I'm sure they, they did, really, but I think the, I mean, this, this is not yeah. work paint. They really met. <laughs> they might have met in all kinds of places. <laughs> They might have like that's right. They, their Capote. paths have probably crossed. The stories, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure there's some people that could tell you stories about those two. So we'll go see the show. Yeah. We'll find so out. ART has a great, great thing coming up. Um, cool. Also, so and then Titus Burgess, who we all know and love from Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. The, the new season of that is that, out. The new right? I, already finished I haven't watched it. it yet. Oh yeah, I just blew through it in two There's days. too many things to binge. It's especially only on Netflix now. There are just too many things. But he he's hosting Stars in the Alley this year. Cool. So yeah, and that's coming up. Um, it's mm -hmm. June second, I believe, in Schubert Alley. That's, yeah, that's Wednesday. that's this. Yeah, that's just coming up. Is it Wednesday? Is that right? No, it's Thursday. Um, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, because oh, it's already it Tuesday. Tuesday. Never mind. It's worth throwing up. So yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Yes. So Go he get should, in line now. He should be wonderful. That's cool. he, It's a perfect lineup. Yep. Also, Natasha Pierre and The Great Comet of 1812, the most Tony-nominated show of the season, they want audience members to take part in their Tony Award performance on June 11th. So we, there's a little link that you can click to enter yourself for that, but... Um, if you know anything about the show, the, the audience almost plays a role in the show. The actors get to perform all over the theater. Their audience members are caught up in don't it. Don't scare people, that. because I don't like but audience it's, But it's not like pull you up. You can yeah. just sit at Great Comet, and they'll just <laughs> Eat your jump around you. and you'll be fine. You don't yeah. have to like get up and dance. But um, they want to replicate that a little bit, which is pretty cool That's for their fun. performance. Yeah. They um, won't have a hard time finding people to do that. No, I'm sure there are <laughs> many people that would love yes. to do this. Um, a few of our favorites, Will Swenson, Brandon Victor Dixon, um, Brooks Asha Man Manskis, uh, yeah. uh, Natalie Cortez, Matt DeAngelis, and Claiborne Elder are joining the cast of that public theater gala from Hare to Hamilton. Um, huh. And that's playing the Delacorte Theater in the Central Park on June 5th. Hare to Hamilton because those are both public theater mm -hmm. hits. Right. In case you didn't get it. <laughs> uh, Angela Lansbury. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've been hearing about this uh, reading of the Chalk Garden that she's been wanting to do for yes, a long time. Yes, I know. There's, I don't know this play, but she she's, seems obsessed with yeah, doing it. Yeah, she's been wanting to do it for a long yeah. time, and now her it's definitely happening. Okay. June 19th at Hunter College, a one-night-only reading, and her nephew, David Lansbury, is going to be joining her. Oh, I remember that. David Lansbury. He did um, Had a Gobbler on Broadway. Mm -hmm. yeah. He did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's going to be part of that. Uh, as well as a That's few other people, interesting. yeah. Interesting. So, very, speaking of Hedda Gobbler, uh -huh. funny enough, Lizzie Watts, 
Uh, she's going to be taking on that title role in the UK tour of the National Theatre's production of that show, which was directed by Tony winner Ivo Vampova. Mm. So that, make sure you, So you know, it's probably going to be really edgy. Really edgy, edgy really serious. Yeah, like very... We like that. We do. Evo. Uh, Evo, he's, he's crazy. Uh, video footage is out for the, um, it's not making its way to Broadway, but the Jimmy Buffett musical Escape to Margaritaville. Yes. Um, it's going to be going on tour, but it's also coming to Broadway, and so you can finally see photos and video footage of that. It's got our guy Paul Nolan. Are there free drinks at that show? There better be. If, the, if it's not, if you can't Sippy drink cups. margaritas and eat a hamburger while you're... A cheeseburger while you're watching Margaritaville. I don't know about they cheeseburger. Haven't. That sounds like you're, you're lowering <laughs> it a little bit. I just want to drink in a sippy cup. That's all. You know, but it's, it's, yeah, you do what you like. Uh, you guys voted on the top ten musicals you would like to see sequels to. This is inspired Re by the Mamma Mia. By the Mamma Mia sequel. movie sequel. That's Here happening. Here we go again. Yep. Um, and the, the, your top five, uh, Into the Woods, which is a great choice. Um, the, okay. Yeah, you know there are still some characters well, left have to think at about the plot end of that. When yeah. you think of these things, you have to think like, well, what would actually happen? Right. Yeah, but there are more fantasy, you know, fairy tale characters that you could, you know, okay. use. Um, Les Mis. Um, Les Mis Part Two. I don't. Yeah, Les Mis Part Two. I don't know if um, part, if okay. that would quite work, but you know there are. Okay. You, the, yep. you revive number everything. Three. Now. Uh, number three is The Sound of Music. Sure. Uh, Rent. Sure. Maybe. And then Hairspray. Yes. Which we came up with a little bit of a concept for that. Yeah, so you'll did. have to go on the site to see yes. what we it's came up with. the 80s. Spoiler. Right. Exactly. But it's, it's great. But Marissa Jarrett Renoker and <laughs> Matt Morrison and Harvey Fashion can totally yeah, they, do it. Yeah, absolutely. They'd all be happy yeah. part of it. And finally, uh, a video on the site today, Bobby Conti Thornton from A Bronx Tale yes. played Never Have I Ever with us. Um, and it's... Fantastic. I think that's the last Never Have I Ever video. Oh, wow. Sorry, guys. We'll have to come up with some well, more fun stuff for soak you. soak that one in. We will. Don't worry. We always do. <laughs> we will. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. That's Is that it? For the news. That's, that's it? it for the news. Yes. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be, we will be back with Mark Evans. War Paint is the one Broadway musical with two best actresses. This season's Tony Award nominees, Patti LuPone and Christine Ebersole. The New York Times calls them both knockouts. Broadway's most gorgeous new show has been called Musical Theater Heaven, with two star turns for the ages. It's as good as Broadway gets. War Paint. Hey, guys. We are back, live at 5. Uh, Mark Evans is here. Hey, Mark. Hi. How are you doing? Good nice to see you. How's, uh, how's life? How's life in New York? So I actually met you years ago. I think it was like six years ago. Six years ago. I think you were, um, I met you, seven. I was in London once, and you were Fiero in mm -hmm. Wicked. I was. And I interviewed you. Um, and, and, you know, we, we always like Fieros. We were talking about a watch that a fan had given to me, a, w a little wa a Welsh watch. Interesting. And um, I was thinking this morning, I don't know where that watch is. It's kind oh. of like I just revealed that. Actually, <laughs> the watch is gone. It doesn't yeah, matter where the watch is. No, we're on to Apple Watches. Yeah, uh, yeah apparently. <laughs> so uh, you are out in um, Milburn. Milburn, New Jersey. You're exploring New Jersey. I am. <laughs> <laughs> you are in Mary Poppins at Paper Mill yeah. Playhouse, and you just opened Sunday night. And we opened Sunday How night. How was opening night? It was brilliant. Yeah. It was, it was really great. We had such a supportive crowd. It's a 1,200 seater. Yeah. I wasn't anticipating such a massive theater when I went there. I didn't know, have any clue. I'd never been there before. Right. Um, and the show is really, really great. I honestly, and I even said this to our director, Mark Hobie, the artistic director of Paper Mill the other night, I took the job going like, oh yeah, I'm going to do Mary Poppins. It kind of like, it is what it is. Right. But this, they've really, really done a brilliant job. It turns it. out it isn't what it is. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, far, it's far more than I anticipated. Dennis Jones is choreographing it, Tony nominee Dennis Jones. Yes. And he's done a phenomenal job at kind of reinventing it as well. Because I think a lot of people have a preconceived idea of what supercalifragilistic is going to be and mm -hmm. what a step in time could be. Right. Um, and he takes no prisoners. We are working hard in this show, and it shows that the the, the results are amazing. It looks cool. really great. Uh, and do you like doing a big musical like that? Is I do. I yeah. do, and it's been a while. I did Book of Mormon here on the tour. Yes. Um, you were Elder Price on the tour for how long? A 18 months. Wow, okay. Yeah, um, and, and it's been a while since I've done a big musical like this, and so it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice to have a 16-piece orchestra and to kind of just fill the house and have these big numbers. We have a cast of 34. 
Um, so, you know, it was big production values, and I wasn't anticipating that. And you're playing Bert, yeah. who we all love. Uh, and so I guess you get to use your. Um, y I'm the only one who doesn't have dialect coaching. Right, I was going to say <laughs> because <laughs> I was I was trying to figure out <laughs> what your elder Price. What did your elder Price sound like? Oh, he sounded American. He Can sounded you like give me a little American. Um, sure. Is, is doing um, American hard for you? No, I mean I I, I did Ghost um, in right. in London right. and you were Sam. Sam and High School Musical I love and Ghost Oklahoma. Musical, by the way, I me love too. I love Ghost me Musical. Me too. You it did a music video. I remember. Right? When you were in it, wasn't there like a... <laughs> yeah, right? and I was like, did I? Yeah, there was like a music video. Yeah. We did, well, we did... Make you like your shirt Siobhan off. Dillon and I, who, Siobhan, who's in um, Sunset at the moment, um, yeah. we played opposite each other and we did right. Ghost Does Gautier. Remember the somebody I used to know? Yeah, when, when that yeah, was you did huge. that. Yeah, yeah that it was like a ghost response. version of that. A random idea. I don't know why <laughs> we did it, but it was, it was hugely, hugely popular. <laughs> Um, yeah. So yeah, I've had to do American dialect a lot of the times, and honestly, I thought so that American. I had a. Just give me a little American. What do you want me to say? Just like for like say <laughs> like um, let's go to Shake Shack at the mall before the movie. Well, let's go to Shake Shack. Well, I I'm just repeating what you're saying. Let's go to Shake Shack at the mall before the movie. So no, so no one knew you were British on the road. Well, that was a great thing. Are you British? I am British. You're yeah. British. Okay. Yeah, I'm from North Wales originally, and Welsh. Okay. Um, okay. But it was nice to kind of go out and perform to an anonymous, anonymous crowd. And we do the Broadway Cares Equity Fight Day speeches at the end of right. the curtain call. And, and suddenly you would be talking like And yourself. I kind of heightened it a little bit as well. Oh, you I did was like, like super So as British? you leave this bloody marvelous theatre this <laughs> afternoon, and, like, and everyone was like, boo, go home. <laughs> um, but no, it was amazing. It was, it was great. And, you know, a majority of my career has had to do with an American accent, but I did have to tighten it when I came here. I was having dialect coaching and stuff, so it's been nice to be in a, in a British role in right. America. So at what point did you decide to move here? Because do you, do you consider well, yourself a New Yorker now? <coughs> I'll always be a Brit. I'm a okay. proud Brit, but I'm a resident. I have my green card, so I've been living here for four and a half years now. Okay. Um, uh, but I originally only agreed to come over and do six months on the, on the tour of Book of Mormon, but I stayed another two six-month contracts and applied for my green card, and called my family and friends and was like, I'm, I'm going to stay. Because <laughs> um, I'd always, I'd, I was talking earlier, so always wanted to experience living and working in New York, but I thought that I, you know, I would do a play that transfers for four or five right, months right, or something. Right. I never anticipated moving here to live, and I don't know if I'm here indefinitely, but I'm definitely here. Not, not indefinitely, but definitely here. But I'm definitely <laughs> in. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and is it? And are people like super charmed in New York by the accent and the whole thing? I mean, you, do you yeah, like? Do I mean you also play it up like at Starbucks and? No. See, that's when I go around. People say my name's Mark. I'm like, my name's Mark, because if they if I say Mark, then the spelling in Starbucks is quite a treat. W with the um, accent, okay. Yeah. So you have but, to um, okay. I have to say Mark, banana, and water. Otherwise, banana, water, are and those mark. Are those the three <laughs> words you say the most <laughs> in life in New yeah, York? Yeah, I need water. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's nice to walk into an audition room and people just automatically assume I'm an incredibly well-trained Shakespearean actor just because right. I have a British <laughs> accent. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's, he's brilliant. I'm like, okay, cool, let's start there. So do you have um, Broadway dreams? Do you, do you Absolutely. Yeah, you want to yeah. do Broadway? Yeah, you're gonna make that happen right now. Well you've got yeah, your iPad. So, do you want Broadway? What do you want to do? Broadway. Did uh, oh, somebody saw you four times on tour. That, that's really no. that's really flattering. No. Peyton said, "What was it like getting a letter from Julie Andrews? What does that mean?" Is that Peyton Crim? Peyton Cole. Okay, no, the Peyton because there's a Peyton Crim in our show. Julie Andrews, um, Mark Hobie, our director, uh, gave everyone a letter from his friend Julie Andrews for opening night. Oh wow! And she sent her well wishes. It was really sweet, actually. That's um, nice. Yeah, a little joke about Super Cal in there. It was wonderful. Thanks, Peyton. Um, did you do Oklahoma? Sometimes people, you know, I do live sometimes out here, so I don't want to like give no, false facts. Hi, Mark. I loved seeing you in Oklahoma in Hull. Is that what it's called? Hull, yes. Yeah. In, oh. yeah. Okay. In northeast uh, of England. And reading your helpful and informative Secrets of Stage Success book. I wanted to ask you about this. You wrote a yes. book. Yes. Do you remember Louise Damon, who I did Wicked with? Yeah. She's the first ever she girl to do both Alphabet and Glinda. Yeah. We did Wicked together, and we wrote Secrets of Stage Success, um, which is a theater advice book. Um, we released it a couple of years ago. Um, cool. And it was just, you know, getting people to write in questions, and we took about 18 months to write it and answered them. Oh, cool. And it's very informative. 
Um, hey, Mar, uh, 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 what's the best price piece of advice you've ever been given? People like to ask this. Ever been given? Yeah. Um, <coughs> uh, so many things. I've given most of them in the book. <laughs> oh, they're in the book. Get um, the book. Get the no book, I think everybody. Um, Brian Cranston's video on YouTube, I'm sure you've seen it, where he um, basically says, um, you don't go into an audition room trying to look for a job, you go and have uh, an opportunity to act. It's an opportunity to do your art. Mm. And I've really, really embraced that. I go into audition rooms and I'm, for that moment, the role is mine. I'm not saying that mm -hmm. the job is mine, but the creative team, whoever is watching me, is only seeing my interpretation of this. And right. it's really freeing and really liberating. And I think that's when you can bring your own authentic self to the role. and it's it's when the best work comes out, when you're not trying to please mm -hmm. someone or not trying to give them what you think they want, because the reality is in an audition, they usually don't know yet what right. they want. Right. So right. just be yourself. So just get in there and prove it that it should be you. Be you. Yeah, that's good advice. Mm. Thanks, Brian Cranston. Thanks, Brian Cranston, <laughs> slash Mark Evans. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did my own version of it there. <laughs> uh, do you have dream roles? Um, I just really want to work, yeah, I, I really want to work on original mm -hmm. stuff now. And you know, you're talking about Broadway, I do want to do it, but I want it to be the right project. I mm -hmm. don't want to go into um, stuff that I've already worked on, or, or I, I just want to be involved in a collaborative creative process with the cre original creative team. Um, and do you, you know have any favorite people you might want to work with? Oh God, the dream big! Come on, endless. The list, list is endless. Um, yeah, absolutely, Joe Montello. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he directed Wicked, but over in London, I mean, we didn't really get the chance to work with him closely on right. the show, so I'd love to do something with him. Mm -hmm. um, I was really thrilled to work with Dennis Jones because I want to do more choreography. Susan Stroman, I'd love to. Well, yeah, you've, you've choreographed too. Yeah, but yeah. I, d I mean, I just want to. I, I want to do dance more choreography. I mean, I want to uh -huh. dance more in shows. Um, it's funny. On my first day of rehearsals for, um, I auditioned for Holiday Inn for Dennis, and we did an hour and a half real fun session, the two of us just together, and, and the obviously it went a different way. But that was when Dennis met me and, and when he saw my dance skills. So on the first day of rehearsals, he was like, I need a little reminder. So that we got in the studio together, and he was like, oh, you can dance. You're a <laughs> dancer. <laughs> and I think people get surprised when leading men can actually dance with uh -huh. like actual technique. Yeah. And I want to be able to showcase that. I want to embrace that. And so that's while I still can, while mm -hmm. my legs still go places that they need to, mm -hmm. and while I can still do it, I'd like to do like real triple threat stuff. So did you start as a, wh which Tom did you discover first, singing, acting, or dancing? I discovered triple threatness. All at I'm once? <laughs> <laughs> I started all came at once. Singing, singing when I was 10, acting when I was 11, and dancing at 12. But when I, gra when I finished school at 16, I left home and I went to a dance college first. Um, for a year, <coughs> and we were just discussing actually, I ended up teaching the third years by the end of my first year, oh so wow. I was like, I'm gonna leave here because it's not challenging enough, wow. but then went to London and was just, it was awesome. I went to a college called Lane Theatre Arts, and that was musical theatre. Uh -huh. um, it's where Carrie Ellis went, and Louise Dearman, and Ruthie Henshaw, and it's a really great place, um, and s but the majority of the stuff is kind of learned on the job. Mm -hmm. really. George wants you to replace Gavin Creel in Hello Dolly. <laughs> I replaced Gavin Creel in Book of Mormon. We're good friends. Uh, I'll, I'll, oh take right, of I'll take it. I'll take it. Thanks, George. <laughs> sure. Hey, Gavin. Sh sure, please, why please. not? <laughs> uh, what's it like working with the kids? Alec wants to know. There are children <sighs> in Mary Poppin. I, I honestly, I've done a lot of work promoting youth theatre, and I used to run my own summer school in Wales for youngsters aged 8 to 18. I love it. I don't often like watching kids in musicals mm. because they have to be really great. Otherwise, I'm like, ah, right. you're acting right, right now. Right, right, right. And we have great kids. I'm so relieved. And it's a real reminder of the joy that you have in theater, mm -hmm. the way that I used to approach it. And just like, it was Abby Grace who plays, she's one of the girls who plays Jane. She was like, I love this bit. And she's about to go on for her bow. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the van ride home right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, just sheer in the yeah. moment bliss. Yeah. And it's really wonderful. They're so talented. That's awesome. Um, uh, somebody wants to know, they love to hear about mishaps. I'm sorry, this comes up all of the course. time. And you were on I the road for plenty. like 18 months. Do you have any great uh, Book of Mormon mishap Book stories? Book of Mormon mishaps. I mean, Chris O'Neill, who I played opposite, he and I used to be real pranksters. So um, <coughs> just forgetting lines and stuff. It's funny, we were discussing this the other day. So in All American Prophet, um, you know, it's, it's like Music Man, it's like Harold Hill. It's like you go and you go, and right. if you miss it, you have missed it. Right. And I was on with one of the understudies for the first time, and he did something that was like an interesting choice. And I was like, oh, that was funny. 
And uh, it was the, um, and God said, Joe, people really need to know that the Bible is in two parts. There's part three to the Bible, Joe. And there's this like set choreography. And God said, Joe, people really need to know that the Bible is, and I can't even remember it. There's a part three. And I missed it, but my body still did the movements. So I was like, and God said, <laughs> <laughs> and it was just these <laughs> noises coming out, and the, and the musical director was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, have a, I have a story from Wicked, um, the bit where Fiora runs off, and, um, well, you know me, I'm always happy, and runs off, and Glinda's like, Fiora, and it's a little dramatic thing. I'm running off, and I, l into literal full splits on the stairs, exiting <laughs> down stage right pulling the vines, trying to get my foot got stuck in the step, and so I couldn't actually oh stand God. back up again. And then people in the audience start laughing, and she can't say, Fiero, <laughs> until I've gone. <laughs> so Louise Dearman is just looking at my, sitting my, I'm not going to swear here, but myself <laughs> on the stairs, struggle, struggling, ruining oh the God. set, trying to go off. Very embarrassing, very funny. I'm always falling over on stage. <laughs> Six do two of me is Do you miss the, uh, the Brotherhood of the White Pants? No. Fear of pants. No, I mean I they're don't. iconic. They are iconic. They they'll are. Be, they'll be in the Smithsonian one day. They are. Funny. Oh, I'm not even going to say that story. No. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's moving bring on. That, moving that on. Good story. <laughs> um, so you are in Mary Poppins. Big, fabulous new production at Paper Mill Playhouse. Right. It's playing through June 25th, I mm -hmm. believe. Yes. Uh, it's in Milburn. It's close to New York. You should go check it out. There's a train that goes right there. It's super quick. It's yeah. just over half an hour, okay. direct from Penn. Yeah, and Milburn's an adorable little town. They sit in restaurants, make a whole thing. That's happen. really cute. Yeah, I'm surprised. It's super cute. Yeah, super cute. Okay, uh, thank you so much for being here, Mark. Thank so great you. to see you. Me too. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow at five o'clock with another great guest. Bye. Bye. <laughs>